Hello guys, this is Monica and I am coming at you at 2 o'clock in the morning. It's very late or very early depending on however you want to look at it. I am trying to pre-record content as I go because I'm fixing to move from Texas to Kentucky. So by the time you see this video, I'm already going to be in Kentucky, I think, the way that I'm trying to plan this out. That's what I want to talk to you about. If you are a crafty creator or anyone really that has a YouTube channel or you're dealing with social media content for blogs, whatever you're doing, I wanted to talk to you guys about my situation and give you five tips for handling your content and transitioning from one place to another, whether it's moving your office to another office, whether it's moving from house to house, or a state to a new state, which is the case that I'm doing. Whatever your move situation is, I want to give you five tips for ways to handle that situation. Those of you that may not be familiar with this channel, this is my uh, my second channel. My main channel is Sparkle by Monica, where I make handmade jewelry and crafty tutorials. And that is something that I'm also trying to pre-record content or edit old content for those people so that I can have it scheduled to post while I'm going to be out of the internet world and not able to make active content. This channel is more about helping you guys with tips and tricks, making any kind of transition from hobby to business. If you are already in the business and maybe you're looking for some sort of small business marketing tips, maybe something that's more focused for handmade crafty creator type people or performance artists. Those types of people that are looking for a little bit more of insight from someone that has experience with dealing their own business, making that change from, from hobby over to business, and the different types of things that I have even expanded into now from being just, you know, making handmade jewelry over into becoming a teaching artist, doing some freelance consultation work, I also do some social media marketing and help for other people. There's all sorts of things that I've, I've got my fingers in the pie, so to speak. I think that's the, the proper terminology. So I want to be able to give that back to you guys. So that is part of this particular video, but it's segmented towards anybody that's in the process of moving. So here we go. <laughs> Top five tips. And I'm going to actually start with number five and work my way up so we can have a little bit of suspense. You need to make announcements. So once you've made a decision of whatever the type of move is, keep everyone updated. Announce it the first time. Keep people updated throughout the process and then make your final announcement and then let them know when to expect you to be back in a live capacity. For my channel here, I've been talking about it I think ever since when we found out the, the last of October. So whether that's been in live streams or on chats or on social media or in videos where I've, I've posted content and everything I've made illusions or comments or specifics about the fact that I'm fixing to make the move. So number five is announce it to your audience. Let them know what's going on. Number four, poll or survey your audience. You can do this in so many different ways. There's a ton of different apps to be able to do it. You can do it on your Facebook page, in your Facebook group. You can do it manually, type in a question and let everybody make comments on it, or you can use the polling feature. You can use a service called SurveyMonkey.com, then it creates an actual link which you can either post on your social media manually, or you can set it up and send it out to your email list. You can incorporate it as a hyperlink in your blog post and various things like that. So to me, I find that to be useful because it would work as a transitional tool. If you have any question at all in making a transition in what you're currently offering versus after the move what you could potentially offer, now's your chance to ask your audience, what do you want? <laughs> so you can use that to get valuable feedback and then YouTube has the polling feature that you can do on the little clickable alerts uh, you're creating cards and end screens and things. 
think it's a very valuable tool, especially if you do, you're kind of, not only are you transitioning because you're in a move scenario, but maybe you have run out of content ideas. Maybe you don't get the amount of engagement you would like and you're open to suggestions. I know I'm always asking you guys, and even at my Sparkle by Monica, you know, what are the types of things that you guys would like to see? Do you think that I'm doing a good job with this channel here? Do you want to see some other options and content? You know, what would you find value in? Because that's what I'm trying to do is offer value for you guys. Poll or survey your audience. Number three, consider rebranding. Now, if you are doing a hobby and this isn't really a business per se, maybe you might not think that you have anything to do with a brand, but really everyone has a brand if you think about it, even people that don't own businesses or they're not trying to act as a business. Your reputation is your brand. So think about that in terms of Okay, well, maybe I make quilts, but I'm not selling my quilts. I just make quilts. So I have a YouTube channel that I'm showing you guys how to make quilts just because I want to help you learn how to make quilts. But I'm not, I don't have a brand for that. I don't need a brand. Well, no, you may not need a brand in the way like you don't need business cards and you don't need flyers and you don't need, you know, a logo and all that stuff. But how you speak, the language you use, the type of content that you share, wherever you're sharing it at, that is all your reputation and that is your brand, be it a personal brand. But that's the way that you can look at it. That's also another reason why I caution so many people that I work with about have their professional way of acting, they have their their personal way of acting with friends and family, and then, you know, maybe they even have a completely separate way that they act with their crafting buddies or, or whatnot, you know, what, insert, insert whatever you enjoy separate from friends and family and work, okay, so maybe they have these three different personalities or representations of themselves at work they would never use harsh language but yet over here on their uh, quilting page their quilting Facebook group they're on a rant because someone is um, stealing someone's pattern and here's a whole list of expletives as far as you know that person who stole their pattern well guess what your friends and family if they also are into quilting or that is a public group, they can see those comments that you're making in, in that group in something, you know, that isn't anything that you really meant for them to see, as well as the people that you work with. That's where I'm, I'm trying to get people to see that your overall presentation of how you act and what you post and what you say and how you do and what you wear, that could all be considered as your own brand, your personal brand. And then it translates itself and transitions into your business brand if you then move from hobby into business. Or maybe you are a performance artist and you are trying to think of a way to have a brand but not be typecast, so to speak, because there are several instances where that might deter wanting to have or thinking about yourself in terms of, of branding yourself. But in that regard, you know, you could look at it as your portfolio of experience, not so much that you only do comedy, you only do drama, or you're just a singer, you're not an actress or an actor. You know, those, those types of things all can uh, go in together as far as the overall umbrella of being a crafty creator. But at the end of the day, who you are and how you handle yourself and what you put out into the world is your brand. Think of that as your, your reputation slash your branding. And then as far as the business side of it, like for my Sparkle by Monica, I literally have a brand. I have my logo. I have my business cards. I have flyers. I do promotional marketing materials. 
And then I also have a digital forum where I create content in addition to the jewelry that I make. But then I'm also a teaching artist, so I have a portfolio for all of that, but it's tied into my Sparkle by Monica. So it, it acts as me all across the board. And then here for the Crafty Creators, I'm still Sparkle by Monica, but I'm over here at Crafty Creators giving you all tips and tricks that relate to handmade, entrepreneurial type of thing. So I hope that made sense, but this would be a good time if you're in the, the process of moving to consider rebranding yourself or if you've never thought of that as a brand or maybe you already have a brand, you want to transition that too, this is a good time to do it. Number two, auto posting. So I know this is a topic actually that is fresh because by the time you see this video though it will have already been done but the auto posting or the auto share feature for YouTube to uh, post over to Twitter is now gone. I'm not giving you any helpful alternatives. The reason that they took that feature away supposedly is because it really doesn't help you to do the auto share because a lot of times it loses the thumbnail picture over at Twitter and then most times unless you before you let it like if you if you do an auto post and you haven't caught it before it does it I don't know if that makes any sense like you've pre-scheduled it to auto post and you've not made any kind of adjustments in the wording that you want it to say when you auto post then it has no hashtags it has no keywords all it does is the title of the video up to a certain point with the YouTube link and it may or may not show the thumbnail of that video and boom that's what goes to Twitter so Twitter wants in the overall conversation of the tweets of the whole wide world they want to have a way to catalog what's being talked about and they don't just want link dump, so to say. I think actually what they're probably ultimately going to do is like what Facebook is doing where they are wanting to compete with YouTube in, in the sense that they want you to have your content there. So they want you to go and manually have a video posted at Facebook. Manually post that video at Twitter. There is an option if your Twitter is set up as a business account where you can go on the media tab and upload your videos and, and do all the fancy stuff that you can do at YouTube, but at Twitter, I don't utilize that feature, but I may actually consider doing that because you can pre-schedule content that way. It's through uh, Twitter media ads, I think is what it is. It's still at Twitter but it has to be set up as a business Twitter for you to be able to do that option. I know the value of hashtags. I do want the opportunity, especially since Twitter doesn't give you the opportunity to edit your tweets, you can't just go back in there real quick and, oh yeah, let me throw a hashtag in there or something. Also, if you look back at the video that I have here on Crafty Creators where I'm talking about the using of Twitter and hashtags, I have, now there's been some time go by, I have seen better results if I kept my number of hashtags within a tweet to just two. That is something that I was telling you guys about the tips, several of the tips I gave during that video, that a suggestion is to only have two or less hashtags in your tweet. Because if you have three or more, then you just get lost in the sea of a bunch of stuff. And although you're using the hashtags to catalog your tweet, Twitter will actually ignore you if you have three or more. So you're less likely to be shown in the results for said hashtag, if that makes sense. So with all of these things happening, auto posting, there's a myriad of ways that you can achieve this because I know if you're like me you are doing like freelance help for um, social media management for other people or you're doing like as a marketing consultant and you are responsible for multiple groups and pages and things like that you don't want to manually be going to every stinking social media and manually typing in and then manually hitting the share button and all that crazy stuff you want to be able to get everything kind of in one house, so to speak, so that it goes out, but in a way that doesn't get lost. Some services that you might be interested in 
in order to auto post your content would be, and I have my list here, Hootsuite. I have used that both professionally and now as a creative path that I'm on here. It's something that as a free platform, you can have up to three social media. If you have more than that, then you need to switch over to the paid platform. Now, I liked it because there's several different things that you can do within Hootsuite that also include your blog, getting your blog automated, pre-scheduling things. Number one thing that I enjoyed was as a handmade jewelry maker, I could go in and query handmade jewelry or handmade entrepreneur or whatever the, the keywords were for pulling content from the wide world in general, Google alerts, as well as any anyone that I follow and I say, because I like to watch Frugal Crafter, I type in her channel, her YouTube channel, her blog, and it pulls that resource each time to let me let me see oh well hey a frugal crafter just posted about her own handmade marketing tips and I want to be able to share that with my audience so that I really enjoyed and then of course you can also schedule that out so that it posts to all of your social medias that you want it to do and you're working through the one place Hootsuite so another one that I have used is vertical response and constant contact. Now those of you who are in the administrative professional realm are already familiar with them probably. It's mainly for people to set up to build their email marketing list but they both also have social media that you can have added into the email marketing. So you can create an email that's tied to a newsletter which then also gets put into a blog and get shared on social media and you can do all of that stuff through those services although you do the more things that you want it to share to the more that you have to consider um, what plan do you need to be in how many followers do you have or how big is your email list for the price point that you're going to pay each month to use that service or you can use their free version which is just simply to build an email list and it's typically up to 200 or 500 emails and then you have to get into paying for that anyway. Currently I'm using MailChimp and the reason why I like to use that is because it is very easily integrated into my website at WordPress through WooCommerce. I'm able to do a lot of things with it that I'm not currently doing. I'm not paying for MailChimp at, at this moment but it has the capabilities for me to also do a lot of that auto posting with my social media and my blog and all of that stuff, not just the newsletters or the announcements for my email list that I'm, I'm building up. So that's something after the move that I'll consider with MailChimp. As far as vertical response or constant contact, those are like the two main things in the professional world. I preferred vertical response because at that time, back then when we were using it for our business department, it was the less expensive option. It had a lot of functionality to it for free. And Constant Contact wanted to charge for every little thing that we were just interested in trying, like creation of surveys and whatnot. So if we were going to use the Constant Contact, we would have to then go ahead and still use the free SurveyMonkey.com in order to create the surveys, whereas Vertical Response already had it included at that time. So some other services that you can use are Buffer, Sprout Social. Sprout Social I hear is very good. They're very expensive though, depending on how much in the social media stuff you want to dig deep and, and share. Spot, Zapier, Later, Planoli, or Planoli, <laughs> however you say that. Zapier is Z-A-P-I-E-R. I actually do use that service for the Etsy notifications that I was getting once I got my WooCommerce e-commerce set up on my website at Sparkle by Monica. Each time that I made a sale, I wanted to have a notification of that. And if you're familiar with Etsy, you know that when you get a sale on Etsy, you get a cha-ching notification on your phone or even in your computer in some cases, although mine doesn't do that. But I uh, didn't get anything like that for the sales from my website. 
So I was looking for something that I could do that. So Zapier is a way that you can set up all of these different types of ways that you can get notifications and things for that being one of them. Now I will have to say I get the notifications from them. However, the ability, uh, I had the option of downloading a cha-ching noise and getting that tied to the alert notifications each time my website made a sale so that I could have that sound effect for my website sales that matches the Etsy sales. However, that for some reason is not working. I'm just getting the notifications uh, via the text and the email messages. So, I mean, that's better than nothing because it does give me the opportunity to see that. I also have it set up when I make a sale at Amazon because so many times my Amazon sales notification would just be in the spam folder, even though I've told it a million times not to put it in the spam folder. So that was auto posting and some recommendations on that for number two. Number one, pre-record content. That's what I'm doing today at 2.19 in the morning. Thank you for being on this crazy ride with me. I have been trying to do pre-recorded content for my Sparkle by Monica. It's not been as bad because I've got years of content for Sparkle by Monica that I just have not had the chance to edit and post. So with the exception of a couple of things, I think I counted up, I've got like 26, 22 or 26 videos that between all of my channels, I wanted to post over the course of X time period for each week. That was going to be a lot of content and there's no way that I could record all of that. Well, there is a way I could do that, but it was going to be a very bad way <laughs> for me to try to do that before moving. So I've been mining my old content for Sparkle by Monica and things that are relative to whatever time period, like Valentine's Day is coming up, and I have you guys some Valentine's stuff over there at Sparkle by Monica that's fixing the hit. Crafty Creators, I'm not that lucky because I've only had this channel for a, a little while, and I don't have that wealth of backlog of unedited content for me to just mine and be able to use for trying to pre-record things. Because I am targeting like marketing tips and things like that for, for crafty creators, handmade entrepreneurs, it's very specific. It's not like I make, I'm doing a tutorial showing you how to make a pair of earrings or something like that. Because I have also been in such a transitional phase with several different things leading up to when we even found out we were going to be moving, I had to stop doing those um, Wavelength Wednesday live streams felt like it wasn't maybe giving you enough value in doing that because I don't have a lot of replays on, on that once those live streams have turned into a video. After the move, I do plan to get back into that because there have been several people sending me messages like, hey, when are you going to start your live streaming up again? And I'm like, uh, well now, <laughs> I didn't even know you was watching those, but I guess in the replays, right? If, if that is something that you guys enjoy, then of course, I'm going to keep on doing that. If there's some kind of value that I can offer, I prefer that kind of live stream as opposed to the live streams that we we all have gone to where it's just, uh, that's um, like a networking opportunity only and they're not really discussing like a topic or showing you how to do anything or being like inspirational or motivational or whatnot. The focus I want to do is to help my handmade crafty creators with whatever it is that you might need help with. If as long as I'm able to provide that information or find it by mining my fellow crafty creators. Eventually I would like to do like I see around on other channels and do like interviews and things with you guys. A transitional phase during the polling and the surveying and talking to you guys and making the announcements and reading your comments and all that stuff trying to figure out, oh, okay, do I want to continue the types of events that I have daily and whatnot. By pre-recording the content, I don't have to worry so much about uh, I'm going to miss a deadline or I'm going to miss posting something for a week. Maybe my stats are going to plummet and my channel is going to get lost in you know, the sea of other channels, which it's already lost in there anyway. <laughs> You know, you know, especially those that have just gotten monetized. And pre-recording your content becomes very important and extremely useful. You can do a series 
in my Sparkle by Monica channel, I've developed something called Sparkle Schools. I will can make content and I will lump it under that particular playlist if it has something to do with I'm just showing you a technique or I'm just showing you a pattern or something that's specific to making jewelry. Whereas if I am uh, just making a general tutorial for like a craft, or a holiday themed piece of jewelry, it's not necessarily a specific technique for Sparkle School. So that's an entire series over there. So I've kind of carried that over here to Crafty Creators, and that's a way that pre recording your, con your content is very useful because then you can create a series. So, for instance, here, the affiliate marketing series that I did, I think I had like three videos in that series. And it may progress, it may grow as I go on through, you know, time with this channel. But for now, I've got the three videos in that series. And so I pre-recorded all of that stuff rather than trying to crank it out each week and get it edited each week and get it uploaded each week and all that. Once I move and I'm on the road, unless I do a live stream on my cell phone where I may, may find some service, pre-recorded content is the only way I'm going to get anything up to you guys to see. That is the number one recommendation that I have is pre-record your content. It may seem stressful, it may freak you out, but you do have a lot of options in pre-scheduling it at YouTube, which we didn't used to have before because now, even if you're not monetized, you can pre-schedule a video, you can pre-schedule it to premiere, as a video which means that when it's premiering during that short little burst of time where your video is playing and it's playing live almost as if you're on a live stream but you're really not you just have the chat functionality but it's not like a live stream in the sense that you're used to being in one that is something that we didn't used to have before but now you can do so you can like hype it up in your social media and be like hey I'm premiering my my double pocket tea favors here on February, I think that's February 3rd. <laughs> yeah, February 3rd at Sparkle by Monica. So be sure to check that out. Although by the time you see this video, it'll be well past that. <laughs> so never mind. But you can set that, hype it up, set that up, and create an entire series in your, your pre-recorded content. So that you feel like you have more of a plan, if you want to have a plan. If you're like me and you're type A and you're trying to have a plan. <laughs> Maybe you get sick one week and you don't have time to film a, a tutorial or a video or do a live stream or whatever it is that you normally would do. You've already got something that's set to play for that week or that day if you're a daily vlogger type scenario. You know, you've, got, you've always got something that's fixing to post. You don't have the stress and the worry so much if you didn't have anything, you've been posting pre-recorded and scheduled your content up, then, hey, you're golden. I'm, that, to me, is the most important thing. So let's go over them again. Number one, pre-record your content. Number two, automate your posting of said content. Number three, <laughs> consider rebranding yourself. Number four, poll and survey your audience to find out what content would they like to see in the future. And number five, announce everything. Those are my top five tips for you guys that might be in the transitional phase of your channel and your content that you're posting everywhere. Hope this information has been helpful to you. If you are in the process of moving, I wish you all the best. I can totally feel the frustration. Like if this was helpful to you and you found this entertaining or useful or whatever you want to say about it in a positive way, please give me a thumbs up, leave a like on it, a comment and share it to anyone that you think that might benefit from this information. Thank you guys for being here, and please leave in the comments below what your opinions are, and if you have any comments for me, uh, any recommendations or suggestions for something that I can change up about the content that I'm offering, or if you just want to say hello, I would appreciate that. So have a craftacular day, y'all. Bye!